Assembling a high-quality model steam plant. I never thought I was going to get to do this. This is part five. The assembly begins at last, starting with the layout and modifying the hand pump. When building a model steam plant, the layout is absolutely critical. And by means of my own type of sign language, I'm saying here, this is where the condenser is going to go. And the copper tube that the condenser is going to be made out of is going to be six inches long. And it's going to take the exhaust from both of the cylinders into the condenser. And then a single pipe is going to go from the condenser to the chimney. Where all the exhaust from both the engine as well as the duplex pump will escape into the atmosphere where it will be totally devoid of oil because all of the oil will remain behind in the condenser. So really in these small scales it's more of an oil trap to trap the steam oil that's in with the exhaust. I have a single Victoria steam plant and I made a very similar condenser for that and I must say it runs better since I fitted the condenser. This is the heart of the system, the main steam boiler. This is a Stuart HB6, 6 inches in diameter, and really well made. When the owner of this steam plant sent me all the components, the boiler that he sent was far too small. It was a very small Cotswold Heritage boiler. So I suggested, as he'd already bought that, why not buy a second boiler exactly the same as the first, and I would make a twin boiler steam plant. But unfortunately, when the second boiler arrived, it wasn't identical. And when he mentioned it to Cotswold Heritage, they just gave him his money back and didn't really want to know. So he went out and bought a Stuart HB6 boiler. And to be perfectly honest, this one's much more suitable for the job. But it's no good on its own. It needs a hand pump, and it needs a big hand pump. It's a large 6-inch diameter boiler, and a small pump would take forever to fill the boiler. So I bought this one from Blackgates Engineering. It's designed for the tender of a 7.25 inch gauge locomotive and it pumps a lot more water at every stroke. But unfortunately it's not going to be sat in a tender. It's going to take water from this very beautiful water tank. I'm going to modify the inlet to the pump so that I can fit a commercial union. And I'll show how I did that shortly. But firstly I'll stop talking and run the steam engine. This is on compressed air in slow motion. And this is a duplex pump built by the late Bernard Walker who was a friend of mine and this is also running in slow motion but it really will run this slow anyway. Right, that's playtime over, and this is the pump. So what I'm going to do is just thread the inlet and put an angled union in there. I'm using a tap to make a thread 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. And the commercial fitting that I'm going to use is simply a clack valve. I may take the stainless steel ball out of it, but for the moment I'm just going to leave it as it is. After shaking the pump vigorously and tapping it on the bench to make sure there's no swarf in the hole, even if there is, the water will soon swill it out. And now I'm fitting the clack and showing the wrong way to use an adjustable spanner. You may have noticed that the jaws were slightly apart and this is definitely not good policy with an adjustable spanner. But anyway, despite the bout of incompetence, and please read that as incompetence, not incontinence, I'd like to take this opportunity to show one or two of the accessories that arrived with the engine. Here are a nice pair of Stuart Models Displacement Lubricators. And this is, well what is this? Oh yeah, these are just a couple of T-pieces. I may modify these to use on the steam inlet lines to hold the lubricators. And the final part out of the box is a globe valve. And I think the original plan for this part was to use it as a regulator on the steam inlet of the steam engine. Now it's back to the pump. 
As the pump now has a very nice right angle fitting where the water inlet is, it can no longer sit directly on the baseboard. It needs to sit on a metal block and that's what I'm making at the moment. In the bandsaw is quite a large piece of steel and I'm chopping the end off it and this will give me a steel block that is precisely the size that I need to mount the pump on. And as usual I've speeded this up because I'm not going to sit watching a bandsaw blade go through a piece of steel. And eventually after cleaning up the steel block on the belt sander it looks like this. I've rounded the edges of the steel block to match the pump and in this clip I'm marking out the positions where I need some holes. I need two holes down the centre to screw the block to the baseboard as well as four holes round the edge. And these four holes will be threaded 6BA to take four 6BA bolts to hold the pump to the block after the block is of course screwed to the baseboard. And now it's over to the drilling machine to drill all the holes. You could use a centre punch to centre punch the holes and then go straight for the twist drill but I prefer to use a centre drill because if I've made a mistake I can sort of correct it with the centre drill whereas once you put the centre pop in the wrong place the twist drill will simply follow the centre pop mark and the hole will be in the wrong place too. So there are my secrets out that's why I always use a centre drill because if I make a mistake I can correct it before commencing and drilling all the way through and doing it wrong. And without further ado, I'm going to speed up the video because this is going to get too boring if I drill another four holes, first of all with a centre drill, followed by a twist drill, etc, etc. So just watch this speed. After drilling the two holes in the centre, I countersink them both to exactly the same depth. And now for the four holes around the outside edge, first of all with a centre drill, and now I'm drilling them with a number 48 drill, which is the tapping size I use for 6BA. And here I'm threading the holes with a 6BA tap and I'm using some cutting compound or tapping compound in order to make the job a bit easier and I certainly don't want to snap off the tap. So here's the story so far. This block has been drilled, it's been countersunk, then it's been drilled again and then part of it's been threaded and now as you can see the pump sits on it perfectly. And I think this is going to be the position. Right next to this beautiful water tank, which I believe are made by a chap in Australia who calls himself Oz Steam Demon. And they really are beautifully made. In this clip I'm being quite obsessive trying to find the best position where I think that this tank looks right. My logic says halfway between the steam engine's baseboard, but then again the steam engine's flywheel hangs over the baseboard so it's a bit longer, so I carried on moving it around and in the end I found the best place for it was level with the crossheads. Because if the tank is too far to the right, the small tap for draining the tank is going to foul the pump. Or it's going to foul the pipe that's going to come out of the top of the pump. When trying to find the relative positions, you have to imagine that the plant is in steam and you need to get at everything. It makes sense to me to group like parts together, the water pump and the water tank very close together. And also I need it to be where I won't catch my hand in the flywheel, where I won't touch any hot steam pipes, so around the corner is a good place for it. And it's right next to the beautiful brass tank, but the main water pump, the steam pump, needs to be near the boiler. This steam plant is going to have a horizontal condenser. To give you some idea, this is a small model centre boiler. It's roughly the right size, it's about an inch too long, but you get the idea, and it's going to fit there. It's in the same plane as the gas tank, so it looks okay. I need some metal, and it's up to Blackgate's I go to get the metal. While I was there, I was having a look at this cutaway model of a little lubricator. I bought one of these a few weeks back, and it's for the Stuart 5A that I'm rebuilding but obviously the one I bought is not chopped in half. Just look at the engineering in this, and it's micro-engineering. I think without my glasses I couldn't even see these parts, and it works beautifully. Philip Blackgates was also showing me some of these laser-cut rods. The technology is amazing. And look at these. I used to saw and file them out of pieces of quarter plate. Anyway, fighting the urge to make another steam locomotive, I picked up my piece of brass sheet and the copper tube. And from these parts, I will make the condenser for the steam plant. That's it for the moment. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.